take charge of your life. Take charge of your time. Take charge of your resources. Take charge of your health. You're the one that's responsible for it. It's not a requirement of society that you not have a heart attack to take care of your family. That's not a requirement of society, but you must make it a requirement of yourself. Society doesn't require that you build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. That's not a requirement of society. It's a requirement you impose on yourself to build a financial wall around your family. Nothing can get through. So impose on yourself the self-development of being in charge, taking charge of your life and your health and your future. is enough time to achieve all of your goals. Just jot that down. Reasonable time is enough time. I had to learn that. Reasonable time is enough time. Here's why. It's not the hours you put in. It's what you put in the hours. If you start depositing greater ideas into the hours you've got later than now, I'm telling you later, you can't believe the productivity that will flow. The ideas you can't think of now, a year from now, they'll start to flow. And when you deposit those ideas in the hours you've got, Productivity multiplies by two, three, five. Next, time management essential, a written set of goals. And then do priorities on your goals. What's important this week? What's important this month? Here's the next one. Often review. Just go over your goals to make sure that your list is working for you. It's got you inspired. It's got you turned on. Somebody says, how come you're up so early? Say, if you were headed where I'm headed, you'd be up early. If you were going to meet who I'm going to meet, you'd be up early. If it was going to stack up for you like it's stacking up for me, you'd be getting up early. Learn to study what we call majors and minors. Here's what you must say when you pick up the phone. Is this a major conversation or a minor conversation? If it's minor, a few pleasantries and you're done. If it's major, maybe you've got to make a few notes. So what's major, what's minor? Now here's the key on this. Don't major in minor things. If you take up major time to do minor things, I'm telling you, you'll be behind the curve constantly. Here's what we learn in sales training. What's major time and what's minor time? Here's minor time, thinking about prospects. Here's minor time, making lists of prospects. Here's minor time, keeping books on prospects. Here's minor time, going to see the prospect. Here's minor time, evaluating the prospect after you've been there. That's all minor time. Here's major time, in the presence of the prospect. That's major time. If you're in sales and you took a look at a week, you'd say, my gosh, I'm spending 90% of my time on the minor stuff and so little time on the major stuff in the presence of. How many hours in the presence of in my day? How many hours in the presence of during my sales week? Because the time that really counts is in the presence of. Majors and minors. Now the key time management essential, don't mistake movement for achievement. It's easy to get faked out by being busy. Guy comes home at night all exhausted, falls in the chair and says, oh, I've been going, going, going. Here's the big question, doing what? It's not the going, going, going. Some people are going, going, going and they're doing figure eights. Their progress is small. So don't mistake movement for you. Now here's the big one, concentration. I had to learn this. All those years ago, I'm in the shower trying to compose a letter. Found it turns out to be a strange letter. So here's what I learned to do. Save the work till you get to the office. Save the work till you get to the work. Don't try to get to the office on the way to work. On the way to work, enjoy the way. In the shower, enjoy the shower. Then go to work when you get to work. I found this to be helpful. Concentration. Here's another big one. Learn to say no. I'm telling you, in such a social society we have now, it's so easy to try to be a nice person saying yes, yes, yes to everything. Find yourself overloaded. Now you got to call and make the, well, gosh, you know, all the time it takes to back out of something that you said, said yes to too quickly. Here's what might be better. I don't think so, but if that changes, I'll call you. 
little things you can use not to overcommit yourself. My friend Ron Reynolds says, don't let your mouth overload your back. It's a good one. Analyze how you are, and if you have some weaknesses, it doesn't seem like you can change. Here's the key, get it covered. I used to keep promising myself I'd keep the books, keep the books, keep the books. Finally, I gave that up. And back then, it only took me an extra 50, 60 bucks a month for some accountant to keep the books. I said, no, I'm going to save the 50 bucks. You can't believe what I started losing in productivity because I tried to save the 50 bucks. So the key is a lot of times you can stay like you are, but just make sure you get it covered. Let all communication systems serve you, but don't let them intrude. When it comes time to have dinner with your family, you shut off all systems, unless the ones that can take messages silently. Don't let the phone ring. Don't let anybody intrude. Come through the front door, nor the back door, nor through the telephone or any other device. So you can't reach John and his family when he's having dinner. The President of the United States couldn't get through. If you develop that kind of a reputation, father, mother, when we have dinner, when we're visiting and have this time with our family, nothing intrudes. So don't let these clever little devices keep intruding. You've got to have a place that's sacrosanct. It's, it's valuable. You don't let anything in for that period of time.